Hello and welcome to episode three of Building Stuff Rocks. I've just went to the Bootstrap homepage and I've noticed this banner on top that says, oh yeah, Bootstrap 4 is coming. And I bet this banner was also there last episode, but I didn't notice it and I noticed it today and I clicked on it and there was a feature that uh, that I really liked and it's this one, dropped worlds, thumbnails and panels for cards. And then I looked up what cards are and this is a card and I think this is exactly what a field button should look like because honestly this doesn't look very nice. And by the way, I've added an alert banner that says this website is work in progress. Check out my YouTube channel to see other videos where the website is being built. So other people don't get confused when they come to this website by accident, I guess. Yeah, so I think we should swap out Bootstrap 3 for Bootstrap 4. And yeah, because we didn't do so much, uh, we just added this homepage with a button and then we have a list of tutorials. Then we click one tutorial and we get a heading and a text. So I think it's fairly easy to replace uh, Bootstrap 3 with Bootstrap 4 and I will get on it and I'll see you later. I have successfully replaced Bootstrap 3 with Bootstrap 4 Alpha 2 and as you can see uh, the changes I replaced the CSS file and down here I replaced the JavaScript file and uh, the navigation bar is now much smaller because the example code is smaller and but you can see there is still the building stuff logo PNG in here and I had to replace text center with text XS center and I've also added the new card block with just a title that links to the field HTML. And this is what it looks like. It looks a little bit bigger than the old one. Um, this is not ideal. Um, in the future we maybe can add some description text to the card and maybe a icon but uh, as for now there is just the title which links to a field and this is what the field looks like um, basically not much different just everything is just a little bit bigger the center text still functions as before with the same problem as before but yeah it looks okay and this is what the tutorial page looks like um, again a little bit bigger than before Everything is bigger now. A couple of other changes I had to make. I had to add a margin bottom of 20 pixels to the navigation bar because the default navigation bar doesn't have a margin anymore. And then I had to fix uh, another margin with our centered field. And then I had to add a width to the card and a margin at the top and at the bottom of a card because by default it has no margin. And you might have noticed there is a JavaScript error. It says uncaught error bootstrap tooltips require tether. Uh, I don't know what that means, but I guess it's alpha. So it's allowed to have error. So we just ignore it for now. Now that we successfully updated to an alpha version of bootstrap 4, we can do what we initially planned for this episode. And that is to use some sort of JavaScript framework instead of having these three HTML files. And so the thing is I've never used like a, well, that's not true. I've used a backbone in the past, but I never really used like Ember.js or React.js or Angular. And what I've decided to do is just use Angular 2 because um, the version 2 is now in beta as you can see. I think since uh, 10 or maybe 12 days or something. And yeah, this is what we are going to do. Use um, Angular 2 and I'm gonna read uh, this tutorial here. And after I'm done with it, I will get started on uh, migrating the static HTML to Angular 2. Okay, I have read the tutorial. I haven't done it yet. I've just read it. And I'm gonna start by following this five minute quick start. I'm gonna try to create this file structure here. So we can start with our Angular 2 services and components and stuff. Okay, first we need to copy and paste this package JSON. Now we have to add this tsconfig.json for our TypeScript compiler settings. Mm. 
make dear app cd app make dear app cd app okay i think this will be our first component let's also install the typescript sublime plugin and now we have nice syntax coloring and then we also need this boot ts file And then I'm going to copy the script files from the index.html to our index.html. Uh, let's see, like here. And then I'm going to copy this script tag. All right. And then we are going to need an app element for our application. And I think I'm just going to put it like down here instead of this HTML. Um, I think we need to make like Angular components for the navigation bar and also this surrounding HTML needs to be in a component at some time. But for now I am just going to replace this with let's say building stuff app like this. And we are going to need to put this code into this template. And I'm going to use a multi-line string. Okay. And I think it should work now. So let's do an npm install. And then we need to make, let's see, an npm start. Okay, something worked, but not quite. Uh, uncaught error bootstrap to, okay, we know this one. Failed to load resource, the server responded, uh, not found, app boot.js. Hmm, okay. Okay, I have found the problem. This file needs to be called tsconfig and not tsscript. I think this happens when you work and talk at the same time. So let's rename that to ts, oops, tsconfig.json. And let's try it again. Okay, I think we have another problem. Um, isn't it tsconfig? Okay, let's check tsc minus w. Okay, this works. Now npm start. Nope. Oh, now I saw a different error. The selector my app did not match any elements. So yeah, we need to set this to building stuff app. And now if we maybe reload, no, I thought well, maybe my types, no, it worked. Wow, okay, now it's working. Can't believe it. So let's see here. Okay, this is doing a lot of requests. Here you can see our app component JS. And here is the template. And this is uh, compiled into JavaScript. So it's app component.js. And yeah, this is our JavaScript that was loaded. And as you can see in the source file, there is just our building stuff app. And I guess we forgot to put loading dot 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 in here, but that's okay. Yeah, so now I have to somehow, when you click on this field, then this template here needs to swap basically. Okay, I'm making a quick status update because I have made some progress. I'm basically following this Angular Tour of Heroes tutorial. And as you can see, the site works. Um, I can click on a field and I can click on a tutorial and the URL is nice and pretty. But uh, as you might have noticed, the field navigation doesn't work yet. And yeah, this is a problem I still have to solve. But I can show you what I've done until now. I have started with a field interface with an ID and a name. 
and a tutorial interface with an ID and a title and a body. And then I made a field service that has basically two methods methods get fields and get field by an ID and both uh, use this static uh, field array here at the top. And for the tutorial service, I have a tutorial array at the top and a get tutorials and a get tutorial method. So let's go to the app component. This is the component that it's is bootstrapped by the boot um, file. And there you can see I have three routes, um, fields, field and tutorial, and fields is set as default. So that means that when I'm going to the page, it redirects me to the fields uh, component. So let's switch back to the fields component. It's right here. So here I'm iterating over the fields and as you can see here, the fields are loaded from the field service. Then I'm generating a link to a field and that will go to the field component. And this uh, iterates over the uh, tutorials, which are loaded by the tutorial service. So yeah, that's basically it. And what I have to do now is, well, fix the navigation because right now it's in the app component. And the problem is at this point where I need the field, I don't have it. So yeah, I need to figure out how to, how to make this work. And I think I have to do a little bit of restructuring because also when you see here, I'm in the field component and this is basically my, this should be the field component, like the iterating and displaying the tutorials and this surrounding code is bootstrap basically. And I think I have to maybe put this into a separate component and also the navigation has to be in a separate component. And then I have to somehow glue these components together and maybe also make it work. So I have the field here in this navigation bar. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going to do the rest and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, it is all done, all cleaned up and restructured. And as you can see, it works like a charm. I can go back to the tutorial, uh, to the field. I can go back to the homepage. And what I've done is I've created three packages, a components, a models, and a services package. And in the models package, I have my two interfaces. And in the services package, I have my two field and tutorial services. And now you can see we have a lot of components. So what I've done is I've created a fields page, which basically contains the navigation, which you can see here. It is now in its own component. And there is the bootstrap container. And inside the container, we have a field list 
component. So as you can see, the field list just renders the fields in a card. And then we have the field page, which contains also the navigation. And here is where I insert the field. So it can be displayed like here on top. And then it has a tutorial list. And the tutorial list um, basically renders the tutorials in a list. Then we have also the tutorial page. And the tutorial page um, also has the navigation, of course, and a tutorial detail component. And the tutorial detail just renders the heading and the tutorial body. Now, one thing I want to point out is on the Angular um, tutorial page, there is an example on how to simulate a slow connection. So basically, uh, the promise is resolved with a two second timeout. So when we do this here in our uh, field service, then you can see if I go to the homepage and reload the application, then it takes like two seconds until the field is displayed. And this works because um, if we look at the fields, um, no, the fields page, no, the, uh, the field list, then you can see what I'm doing. Basically, I am loading the fields from the service and then I'm going to assign the fields to this guy over here. But this is a promise. So the code gets executed until here and then it renders the view, but, um, the fields will be assigned well after the view has been rendered. So that means that at first uh, the fields array is empty and then nothing, nothing is rendered here. And then eventually the fields um, attribute gets assigned. And then because of the property binding of Angular, it will eventually update this view and then render the fields as you can see here after two seconds, a two second delay. Okay, so that's all fine, but um, when you go to the, the tutorial page, you can see, no, sorry, to the field page, you can see that I am passing the field to the tutorial list, but if I don't check if the field exists, then you can see what happens when the application reloads, then we have no tutorials. And that is because apparently when this field parameter gets passed in here, um, it is empty because the same thing happens as in the fields page, but the tutorial list doesn't get re-rendered. So that means that this stays empty because I'm when I'm passing the field, then on ng on init, it fetches the tutorials and it checks if this field is assigned and if not, it does nothing. So. I've struggled a little bit with this, but I eventually found out that if you check here, if the field exists, then it will update the view and you can see we have um, the tutorials. So I'm not sure how this works internally, but yeah, this is uh, something I struggled with a little bit, but yeah, now it works fine. So, okay, I think that's it for this episode. It is now New Year's Eve and I have to get this video uploaded, but next episode will be in 2016. And I think we will be using Gulp or something to package this thing and upload it to GitHub pages. And then we, I think, will do some Jasmine tests or something. And yeah, there is still a lot of work to do. So see you next time.